Ladies and gentlemen, this Red Gaming Theatrecom video, we're going to be discussing the sound block of the Xbox One. Now, it doesn't sound so exciting as, say, the video processing units, or, say, the CPU or the memory. But in actuality, the audio is incredibly important, not just for those who really have uh, great surround sound setups, but also for those who enjoy high frame rates in games. What? I hear you scream. How can that make any sense? Well... In the previous generation, so that, that of course would be the Xbox 360 slash PlayStation 3 era, it was well known that the audio was extremely uh, hungry for process resources. In fact, some developers had actually stated that the Xbox 360 had one of the hardware threads completely dedicated, we're talking about CPU hardware threads, completely dedicated to audio processing. So you can imagine just how much of an impact that made for other applications, for other processes that are running. In other words, it reduces, for example, physics or collision detection or whatever else is going on in the background. In other words, this drastically frees up CPU resources and obviously anyone who knows anything about technology will tell you that more CPU resources available are only a really, really good thing. Now, some people would just say it's a sound card. Some people would consider it something like, I don't know, the Sound Blaster from, or the AC97 from, say, PCs. In other words, a pretty simplistic um, design, and that's it. But that's actually quite far from the truth. It's actually kinder to say it's more along the lines of, say, a DSP, or also known as a Digital si Signal Processing. I'll say that again, Digital Signal Processing Block. And the key behind this is known as SHAPE. That stands for Scalable Hardware Audio Processing Engine. Quite a handy acronym, I'm sure you'll agree. The premise here is that not only will you get a lot of flexibility, but the developers themselves will notice significantly less CPU impact for processing complicated audio. And, for example, at 48 hertz, you're going to notice that... 2.67 ms audio frame of delay, in other words, latency, and this is uh, very good in comparison to the Xbox 360s. So Shape itself uh, operates on blocks of 128 samples, and they support a 24-bit integer, but it's 32 if it's using the CPU. Now, from what we can tell by leaked slides as well as released slides, it appears that the audio um, unit itself is actually tied in to the coherent connection of both the CPU and main memory. Now, obviously, this is really important because if it has access to this, you can imagine just how important that is for audio processing. So there are several parts to this, as you can imagine. There's the XMA decoder, now, XMA, as you can imagine, is something that was developed for the Xbox. And indeed, the shape is able to handle 512 XMA format voices. Now, the codec itself is really configurable and allows a pretty damn good compression. In other words, you can define, for, well, developers can define how good, how high quality the voices actually are in terms of compression. So you can have a 6 to 1 ratio all the way up to a 14 to 1. Now, I did point out that it does have a coherent uh, memory access, and this is known as DMA. So Shape itself has hardware which is dedicated for transferring the audio. So in other words, it's able to share what it has processed directly to and from the allocated space in memory. This is really important because this allows it to, to get the CPU's help in processing data or for the CPU to tell it, you know, to process little bit, this little bit of data right now. And this is very similar, of course, to in many ways how the GPU works. It also has another part known as FLT slash VOL, and this allows um, volume scaling and state variable filter implementation and this is actually for 2500 voices and mixes. You also have the mix buffer and that will take 128 in place mix channels and it won't need to access main memory and so it can actually add additional channels um, but that's only done virtually I'm afraid but regardless 
all of this, as you can start seeing, is leading to a very powerful piece of hardware, to say the least. The EQ slash CMP area of the module will provide up to 512 channels, and that will be free band equalization. It will also support, by the way, dynamic range compression. It will also support SRC. And now SRC is a polyphy a polyphrase, I'm sorry, it's sample conversion. Um, and it's high quality, of course, it's a dedicated unit. And the purpose of this is to actually resample uh, mono channel audio. Now, mono channel is still pretty damn important, of course, and it can actually handle 512 uh, audio channels simultaneously. Now, from what we understand, the unit actually has um, the DSP control core, the scalar core, and well as two of the vector cores will all have their own caches and they will share 64k of local SRAM uh, cache and that will act as kind of like a level 2 cache which is local to all of them in other words you can share this a very small amount of memory now one of the key components for Connect is known as AVP no not Alien vs Predator but Audio Vector Processor now the purpose behind the AVP is that it's primarily for MEC. Now, MEC stands for multi-channel echo cancellation. And the purpose behind this is to help to reduce, say, background noise if you're speaking on a microphone or connect and to actually support speech recognition and so on. In other words, it helps to clean up your audio to make you sound better, to make it so that voice commands are recognizable and a lot more stuff besides. Now there's an additional device and this is known as ASP, ASP also known as Audio Scalar Processor, this has nothing to do with programming of course. ASP itself supports scalar float and vector integer operations. Now think of it this way, voice chat codecs, and we're talking about those which are wireless communications, for example your headset or, for example, on the actual console itself, which are being sent on, say, network. So let's assume that you're playing online on, say, Xbox Live, and it needs to send data to and from the wires. The best thing to do is to actually compress and decompress this data. Why? Because it simply makes communication simpler, smoother, and faster. Obviously, if you're sending large amounts of data down the wires at the same time, you're going to get some delay. And this is the same if you're doing it through the headset, so it's better to actually compress this and then decompress it later. So the idea behind that is pretty simple. Now, it also supports XWMA compression, and that's in hardware. Now, to give you an idea of just how much of a difference this makes, back in the day, uh, this was actually done only on a CPU uh, for decoding, and that was on the Xbox 360. Remember how I was saying just earlier how the difference between CPU, um, or how much, should I say, the CPU uh, resources were being taken up, and this is just one of the reasons for that. Now I'm going to save ACP for now. ACP, also known as Audio Control Processor, what the hell does ACP actually do? Well, it, the name's kind of a good giveaway, actually. The idea is this helps to schedule, to figure out the state of what's going on for all the other pieces of audio components in the actual system. It will also be able to do other bits and pieces, such as, for example, setting up new audio streams and so on. And CPU involvement in this is actually pretty much unnecessary. Now, from what we can understand, Microsoft have pretty much designed this whole unit, the whole audio block themselves, from the ground up. Now, it does appear that, and this is unconfirmed by Microsoft, but the rumours that are going about indicate that the actual unit can handle about 15.4 G-flops. Will mean that the unit is using, or operating, I'm sorry, at about 500 megahertz. Now, what are the reasons for such a beefy system uh, is because of audio positioning. Now, audio positioning is pretty simple, obviously. It has to work out, because of connect and so on, where you are in relation to the console. And obviously, all of this requires pretty heavy signal processing, hence why there's such a beefy audio unit inside the system. All of this, of course, also means that there has to be co uh, very good coherency between the rest of the system, so there's no delay. And so Microsoft have actually gone to great pains to reduce the Connect latency. In other words, to make sure that the Connect audio systems 
are going to be as fast and smooth as possible. Lastly, we're just going to really quickly go into a few other aspects of audio processing, for example, for background applications. So obviously for the Xbox One, it heavily relies upon multi, uh, multitasking and so on. So let's assume, for example, that while an application, in this case, for example, a game, is at the foreground, in other words, it's a current application that's, you know, get all the attention. Obviously, it has full and complete access to the audio hardware, as well as everything else for that matter. In other words, that's the audio hardware's primary function, is to process that audio data for that application that is on the foreground. However, let's say that you remove focus, let's say that you bring up something else and that software, whatever that was, is no longer at the forefront of processing. From what we understand, its actual hardware state is suspended, in other words, it's held where it is, and then when you return back to the application, it will basically continue where it left off. On the other hand, Certain titles might choose to tear down, and this basically means it will basically complete and utterly nullify what was there and then rebuild it, uh, its audio graph. So once the application's been put back into um, the foreground, it will be reconstructed, the audio. However, obviously certain applications, for example, for streaming radio and that type of thing, are going to be different. For titles that are supposed to be playing, say, audio in the background, for example, if you choose to listen to uh, music, then things are a little bit different. They can indeed continue to play audio while they are in the background, but then they have to choose the best method to do this. For example, should it be software rendering only, in other words, done via the CPU, which isn't so bad if it's something like a radio show, but then it's also possible that it could also be done via the hardware, so in other words, the DSP block, and then transfer to the CPU. However, this obviously has some issues by itself, mostly involving around CPU costs. So certain applications which require heavy use of uh, shape hardware, they won't really be decodable by the CPU because of the high amount of CPU usage that would be uh, associated with them. In other words, it would affect, say, the running of a game. So although there is actually um, engines there, which does help to mimic, in other words, emulate uh, in software the functions of the hardware, it obviously isn't particularly going to work for all applications simply because of the processing costs associated with them. I think that just about does it for this particular video. It's been a fairly brief whirlwind, but regardless, I think we've all got a reasonable understanding now of the audio hardware. So I'm going to get going for this particular video. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. I will see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.